someone came up to me recently and said, actually, now your hair long, it's better, you know, you look more like a woman. Yep. I was like, huh? Last year, I look like a man. Hey, it's Azura. Hi, I'm Jermaine. And today we're back on Clarity's Hush Podcast. As you can tell, we minus one member, plus one member. That's right. Everyone, please say hi to someone that we're head over heels for. It's Maggie Wang. Hello. Hi, ladies. Welcome, welcome. It's weird. Now I know how my guest feels because I've been listening to your podcast for a bit. Oh. Just to warm myself up oh, to cute. this set. I think that's just how I work. But you, so, this is not your first time being a guest. On no, a not at all. Yeah. But first one in Singapore. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Maggie so. comes all the way from across the border. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she literally just flew in and we're so happy to have her here and there are a lot of parallels that we have with Maggie did you know that she used to be a radio DJ I heard yeah, yeah. I heard. Fly FM that's How right was that? it was awesome I think I was there for about close to 8 years oh. wow wait 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 you guys are DJs as well yeah. right like are you guys still on radio yeah oh how long has it been 8 years <laughs> oh <laughs> exactly yeah. oh 5 yeah oh right I mean we're around there around there about the same so yeah 8 years then I left just before COVID so then just when COVID hit I'm like oh shit why did I leave because mm. then I had no income for a long time but anyway, then after that, just before COVID, I also started my own podcast, Head Over Heels. So that's where I am at right now. I love that. I was stalking you on Instagram, of course, naturally. I really like the content that she puts out. It's very relatable. It's very much like what we do here at Hush. Yeah. Exactly, because I saw as well yeah. your reels. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's very in line, actually. Yeah, I think our brand is quite quite similar. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I so love that. Very happy to have Maggie here. And I think we just want to pick your brains about a few Tell things. Me. I know you've had like such a storied past, you know, at one point, you took part in a beauty pageant yeah. and you've had like so many different lives and now you primarily do content creation yeah. um, Podcast, as well as podcasting hosting, hosting and all mm. that right you also co-founded Motion Lab which yeah. is a boutique fitness studio that's right that's right I did yeah. so yeah I think I do a lot of things so where do I start that's where the similarity ends you see <laughs> <laughs> that's where it ends the fitness part the fitness part yeah. <laughs> but are you very like you know into you, fitness yeah okay I think it started when I think at one point of my life, after pageant, I kind of ballooned up. Because during pageant, I went through like an intense strict oh. diet that was very difficult, as everyone would do, because you mm. are literally being judged by the way you look. And you need to fit a certain standard. You need to fit their mold. And this was like, what, 10 years ago. Mm. And there's no such thing as body positivity, body neutrality, advocating for who you really are. No, you have to be what people want you to be. So I remember I was so skinny, like, oh my goodness, 50 kilos for my oh height. Gosh. Like I'm about 174. That's crazy. Yeah, five yeah. feet eight. Mm. So 50 to 52 kilos. And then shortly after the pageant, obviously, you know, okay, back to life, you know, I didn't win. Though. So can I say fuck? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Just want to check. Yeah. Fuck that shit. <laughs> so I ate and obviously my body's not used mm. to this new diet again. And I ballooned up to about like 15 kilos heavier. So that went on for a while and at one point I was at 85 mm. compared to 15. Oh wow, okay. So that's quite a big gap, right? Mm. And obviously that really affected my self-esteem and everything else. And being in the entertainment industry, or at least at the time I was trying to get into it, I wasn't getting any jobs, let's be real. I couldn't fit into any of the sample sizes. Yeah. You, you guys know how this works, yeah. right? How do we explain it a to them? A sample size is like a model <laughs> size, right? Yeah. It's the size that they make which is usually a size zero yeah which is a UK, oh, maximum two yeah uk six, six to maximum eight. eight yeah yeah so if you see all these celebrities at events most of the time when they are being dressed by a brand mm. they are being given these mm. sample sizes if you can fit great and most yeah. of the time not everyone's going to fit into it so at the time when i was at like close to 80 kilos oh hell no i was going to fit into it mm. so i think i went through a really tough time because like i want to do something that i love doing but no one was taking me seriously no one was giving me a chance just because of the way i looked did you ever feel like, because you finally got to eat, right, after depriving yeah. yourself for so long, did you actually enjoy it and oh. feel happy and actually at any point in that process, even though you put on weight, felt like, you know what, fuck this, like they should take me for my talent and for what I am. Yeah, 
definitely did. I remember that very first plate of nasi lemak. Oh, it was <laughs> glorious. Oh my God. Like the best nasi lemak ever, even though it was just like a hotel buffet mm. style. Like, I don't think it's that great in retrospect. But like at the point, I was like, this is the best meal I've ever had in my life. But yeah, I did enjoy it. But I think, right, it was really the noises around me that made me feel the way I did. Like people telling me, oh yeah, you gain weight. Oh my gosh, what happened to you? Oh, are you okay? Just because I gain a little bit of weight at a time. Do you think it's not okay to say to someone, I think you've gained some weight? Ever, <sighs> ever. Or is it ever acceptable? Now, I don't think so. Like sometimes, you know what? I feel like it's habitual. I say it sometimes. If, if I see a really close friend and I see that they've lost weight, hey, you lost weight already, yeah? I Even- would say lost weight. I wouldn't say gain weight. Oh, right. Just yeah. because gain society means lost weight as yeah. like, We're so obsessed. as a good thing. Uh, yes. Yeah. We're but obsessed with being skinny. It's yeah. true. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? I can't remember when, a few years ago. <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I had this point where I lost quite a bit of weight. Mm. And that was when I realized that when you put on weight, people say shit. Yeah. When you lose weight, people say shit. They're oh, going to yeah, say shit 100%. regardless. Regardless. Yeah. And yeah. that was when I realized because they were saying stuff like, oh, you don't have anything anymore. Oh. oh. What do you mean? Assets. Assets. Oh, like oh, assets and okay, boobs. Okay, okay, okay. Like, oh, you don't have anything anymore. Girl, you have enough for days. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say like, oh. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> don't look here. <laughs> I'm like, A and negative A. <laughs> No, it's not a great thing, as I always say, right? It's not as glamorized yeah. as it is. No, because it's so out of pocket. How can someone say to you, I know. you don't have anything anymore? And then anymore. they go like, are you sick? Like, are you fine? <gasps> oh. Skinny ma sick? <laughs> or the worst I've heard is, are you on drugs? Oh my oh, god, are you serious? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, you're in Singapore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't play, you know. I'm like, really? Mas? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. And then when that was when I realized, like, you can't do anything. And not like hear noises. Yeah. I mean, obviously now I'm no longer that 80 kilo girl. Mm. And I've not been that girl for a long time. Mm. But there are some people that I've not seen for years. Mm. But that's all they talk about. Hey, you really lost weight, huh? But the truth is, no, I lost this weight like years ago. Is this really all you have to say after not seeing me for so long? But yeah, it is just a favorite topic of conversation. I am still trying to figure out why. If you're the kind of person who does this a lot, I wonder why. Yeah, I think in society, we're primed to see physical appearance before yeah. we see anything underneath Absolutely. that. It's very sad, Absolutely. but it's the truth. And a lot of what we think is beautiful, what we deem beautiful is mm-hmm. tied to physical appearance. For mm-hmm. sure. My concept of beauty has changed so much over time. I remember when I was 11 or 12, I've tried every method to lose weight. I thought I was so fat. Now looking back, I was like, what the f- am I thinking, <laughs> right? Have you guys tried skinny tea, detox tea? Oh yeah. yeah, I have a story. Yeah, yeah. oh, about skinny oh. tea? Not skinny tea, but like all these laxative okay. oh, no. tea that helps you. Is it detoxes. an explosive story? Very explosive. I think mm. the toilet bowl didn't work oh, at some no. point because I was shitting so much. <laughs> so much. Every day I got obsessed with detoxing myself. Like getting everything out. And I was living in this rented home and the toilet bowl stopped working on that was bad. Like I want to shit not get a (laughs) flush. That can be good for you. I mean apart from the tea I actually took a fat burner. Basically a fat burning pill. Like very high on caffeine. Remember what I told you just before Ah, we came on? Yes. I'm very sensitive to caffeine. Like I get intense heartburn. Did it come from there? That was when I realized that caffeine is not good for my body. Right. That's when I realized. So mm. I took these peels hoping to lose my weight fast. Mm. Like I just couldn't take it anymore. Everybody's just like telling me that I should lose weight. So I took on these fat burning pills and I ended up in the hospital because oh my, my body, like 10 pills at a time, right. but like I took for quite a bit of time. And even though I was starting to react to it, I didn't give a fuck. I was like, I just wanted to lose weight. I was so mm. obsessed. Mm. I was like in a tunnel vision of trying to lose that damn weight, even though actually I didn't have to, right? Basically what happened was I had rashes all over my body for like a whole week because oh, oh my, my body just could not take in the amount of caffeine that was mm. in my body. Already on top of being very sensitive to caffeine, which I didn't know at the time. So yeah, I ended up in the hospital and doctor told me, just stop this pills. It's not good for you. If you really want to lose weight, you you got to do it the proper way. Mm. So that was really quite a wake-up call for me because something worse could have happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy that we would risk our lives yeah. for beauty or, or to look beautiful in the eyes of society? Yeah. Like, not even for ourselves. It's for so, other people. It's for right? other people. Yeah. I think that's just crazy. Like, the standards of beauty have changed so much. I remember when we were young and it was like Gossip Girl area. Yeah. Yeah. It was all about the skinny, skinny, oh, skinny. Girl, yeah. Like low rise, you could see, I don't know what they call it, the lines at the hips. Oh yeah. The, I've the never bump. had that. The 
V? The but v that's not and guys? The v? Yeah. No, I don't know. A girl's the can... hip bone, right? Hip bone, Protruding yeah. Protruding hip bone, like yes. a Paris Hilton. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like the cocaine skinny kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And then now it's like Kim Kardashian. Yes. The bigger, the better. The BBLs, you know? Thick. What's BBL? BBL is like when you get like a butt, they get implants in your Are butt. Are their butts real? I really want to know. No. Is it normal to have... That small weights and such a big butt. I think for I some think... people, perhaps, but most people actually risk their lives to get butt injections. Implants. Yeah. yeah. Or mm. illegal butt injections because mm. they're cheaper. And then they start leaking out of their no butt. No way. Yeah. Oh, uh, wasn't there that story of someone who had done it with like a shady doctor, like somewhere overseas? I'm and sure. then people... it was actually semen that they were putting in. No. Semen. You kidding Cement. me? Semen. Oh, cement! <laughs> cement is what? Uh, yes! Cement she, is what? Is, is she still alive? I can't remember. No, there are people who die from these sur oh, surgeries. Yeah, so many happened this year, like I read about it. So please don't go to a black market doctor. Like, no. I'm pretty sure it's not worth the life yeah. that you're risking. Like, please, please don't. There are better ways to do it. How do you keep up with all these, you know, changing beauty trends? You can't be like skinny one year, voluptuous the next yeah. year. Your bone structure is not going to change with yeah. the trends, yeah. right? Yeah. What do you think about anymore. this? I don't anymore. Now, now I can say I don't But how? Anymore. How do you like detach yourself from that? It's so hard. I think with social media, it makes it even harder, right? The people mm. that we follow, it's so important. So I've learned to really clean up my environment, like what I'm exposed to every single day, because I can only imagine as an 18-year-old at a time, I was constantly being exposed to, back then we didn't have Instagram, Twitter. We had like magazines. And Tumblr girls. Yeah. No, yeah. Tumblr girls. Do you remember these magazines? Hello Magazine, People Magazine. Yeah. Mm. Okay. On covers, we see mm. women in bikinis. Yep. And they would highlight and spotlight onto their cellulite and say, mm -hmm. Ew! Do you remember? Yeah, they actually do Britney that. gain weight, yeah. like things like that. That era, like it doesn't happen anymore. You're going to get cancelled probably. But like that was what I was exposed to at the time. So to me, I was like, yeah, cellulites are bad. Mm. I shouldn't have foldings. I should have muffin tops, love handles. No, never. Mm. But now I think what I'm exposed to really are women who equally you know embrace the changes in their body like mm. our bodies are constantly changing even in a month throughout our period cycle right? like currently right now yeah. i don't think i don't feel the most confident i have to say because my period's about to come i hey, feel so have I, oh really yeah. oh, i feel the most bloated right yes now. <laughs> and, and I, i've got like this pimple i feel like it's popping out i just feel like i don't feel the best but then after my period oh my gosh i'm a different person mm. like oh i feel so lean i like i conquer the world so like even in a month's time our body is changing yeah so what do we expect from that right yeah we really have to have the understanding of our cycle and the phases yeah. that we go through mm. apparently we only get like 10 good days a month it's true 10 it's good days, days a month are a train wreck but oh, it's true <laughs> that's the price to pay for being yeah. a girl but here's the thing right even with let's say on magazines they don't highlight these like satellites for example like these days these, these days, days right right right, right. right. But let's say you see an ad marketing products that tell you, you know, it's to get rid of cellulite. Mm. I think that in itself already plants yeah. something that, yeah. oh, it's not good. We don't like it. We don't want it. That's yeah. why we need things to get rid of them. Absolutely. Yeah, I think... Even till this day, right? Especially all the young kids and all that. They are still being, you know, incepted all these mm. ideas. But... On the contrary, I think that there are a lot more role models yes. that people can look up to. I follow this girl. Her name is Brie Lenehan on Instagram. And she basically shows what it's like when you pose for a photo mm. as opposed to when you don't pose. Yeah, yeah. It's the same person at yes. the same time, yes. but you look completely different. Yes. Yeah. The lighting, the harsh light, the down light. Yeah. When you like kick your muscles and you yeah. don't or you let it go. Yeah. Like I follow this woman too, Donna Mercier. She shows off a cellulite. She talks about how mm. it's normal to have cellulites. All these images that you see on magazine, on social media, they're all highly, highly photoshopped. Even they actually don't look like that in real life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's be real. Exactly. Yeah. So it is what it is. So I am learning. Obviously, it's not perfect. I think as women, even men, I feel like go through all these insecurities. Yeah. I feel like at this point, it's no longer like a woman's thing. So as long as you've got a body, you look a little bit different from other people, you will feel some sort of insecurity that only mm. you know, right? But right now, I've learned that, you know, I only have one body. Instead of looking at my body as 
good or bad. Like, yo, like my pouch, this tummy that I am is holding onto my organs. It's keeping it safe. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this because during COVID in 2020, I was hospitalized. Oh. It was the peak of COVID and I... I fainted in the toilet. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I fainted in the toilet from extreme pain. And I thought it was maybe food poisoning. You know, sometimes we get food poisoning and we feel this extreme sharp pain. Like mm. abdominal pain. Yeah, abdo right, lower right. abdominal pain. Mm. So I thought it was that. I thought, oh my God, I had something bad and, and I don't know what happened. But the next thing I know, I blacked out and I was rushed to the hospital. They did all sorts of tests. They thought it's hemorrhoids. They thought it's this. Turns out I had a ruptured ovarian cyst. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. And it was a blood cyst. It already ruptured inside of me at a time. And the blood affected my appendix because it was my right ovarian cyst. It was on my right side. So I had to do an emergency surgery like mm. right away. But because it was during COVID, dude, I had to wait oh. for eight freaking hours. Okay, like, I don't know like Malaysian, maybe in Singapore, not like that. <laughs> I'm from Malaysia, so I waited so long. In oh, pain? In pain! Oh, jeez. Oh Can I God. explain how painful it was? When I sit, it hurts. When I lie down, it hurts. It just hurts no matter what you do. I cannot pee, even though I feel like peeing. Oh it hurts God. so bad. It had oh ruptured. So. Yeah, it was 5 cm quite big. It didn't affect your appendix as yeah, well? Yeah, my appendix inflamed already, which oh. was which added on to the pain, oh. right? So they had to take out your appendix and, and what was left of the cyst. Oh. Yes. So they had to clean it up. So the next day only I could do the surgery because I had to make sure I'm clear from COVID oh or whatever. Gosh. Again, this is at the peak of COVID. So that was really a learning lesson for me that the recovery was quite painful. Right. I couldn't really walk. Like little, little things like just taking a shower mm -hmm. and walking to the kitchen felt like such a difficult thing to do. So it opened my eyes to, you know, yo, my body is so amazing it went mm. through so much and it's still giving me life so ever since then I no longer kind of like beat myself up even if I gain weight or lose weight if I gain weight I see it as an indication okay maybe I've not worked out I have not been eating right okay let's do better mm. not because oh my god why do I look like this so like I've shifted my mindset in that sense to no longer beat myself up my yeah. body is my body is holding on to all these organs that's letting me breathe and do the things that I love mm. most things in life I think it comes with perspective right once you're able to kind of realize line then you find that yeah. they, like you know for example people always say like you shouldn't look to celebrities to determine your beauty standards mm -hmm. I beg to differ because what I've done in recent years is I've checked out celebrities yeah. with features that I used to hate myself for ah. for example right Jenny of Blackpink is very much loved for a round face I'm not saying I look like Jenny I say first <laughs> but big okay? can I say you look a little bit I think you're very yeah. beautiful you know when I first came into the room like, these ladies are so beautiful that's why I was like can I go to the toilet first <laughs> I need to fix my face <laughs> But she has a round yes, moon yes. face, right? Which she wasn't loved before, right? It wasn't. Yeah. But now everyone's like, oh, so cute, so cute. <laughs> moon face. So I'm like, actually, my face is round too. If hers can be loved, yeah. why can't mine be loved? It's loved. Right? Like, I love, we it. love it. <laughs> we love Thanks, it. We love it, guys. I don't know about you. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. So things like that, right? You know, taking the positive of it, I think is very important. There are some things that, you know, are not so much like, I think more of beauty standards from since forever. Mm. For example, mm. have you guys ever heard that long hair is sexier? Yeah. Things like that. Because last year, I had my hair about this short, oh. like a bob, right? Someone came up to me recently and said, actually, now your hair long. It's better, you know? You look more like a woman. Yep. I was like, huh? Last year, I looked yeah. like a man. <laughs> That's very so okay. this is the first time I'm having short hair in my life. Really? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I need to go back because I listen to your episodes. I don't watch. I need to go back and watch it. <laughs> yes. It used to be like really long. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. I've always been afraid of cutting it. I also feel like it stems from a place where I've heard growing up, like, oh, have long hair like a lady, you know? It's just more feminine. Yeah. You just look nicer. Yeah. And then you sort of just hold on to that. Yeah. But actually, I could be bald if I wanted to. Exactly. Will you be? If I continue bleaching, I will be here. Yeah. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah. But I think you, you ladies look so great. We all do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look you, you look amazing too. I need to know what lipstick she's using because oh. it's a very nice colour. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like, I'm I'm like it. I like it. <laughs> there are some also very weird beauty standards which just proves to you that beauty standards are from the medieval ages. Okay. It oh. used to be considered attractive to have a very clean forehead. So what they would do is shave off their eyebrows, shave all of the hair on their forehead and pluck the hair so that their hairline goes as high as possible. Girls. No. 
really? That was considered attractive. I mean, if that's your thing, you do you, but can we not bring that back? <laughs> <laughs> like how they brought no, Y2K back, right? No, we don't need this. We don't need that. In yeah. ancient Greece, the unibrow yes. was very popular for girls. Mm. If you had a unibrow, you would consider it as so gorgeous and Frida. so attractive. Yeah. I remember voluptuous bodies too. Yes. Like not yes. skinny bodies. No, yeah. not at all. Like we don't want to see your muscles. We want your flabs. Like, exactly. Remember the sculpture? Chull bearing head. Yeah. That was yeah. beautiful, beautiful, right? So beauty standards are just, come on. Uh, it's a meta perspective, don't yeah. you think so? All it takes is one person to be accepted and then everybody goes, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. But you can do that for yourself. Yeah. And I feel like if you are here to change these beauty trends, you are setting yourself up for failure because you can never win. They change every few years. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to be able to catch up. I heard of this trend on Chinese social media where they take a piece of A4 paper and they hold it up to your waist. Oh, yeah. And I've the short of length of it, right? If it's bigger than your waist, then you're considered skinny. Oh, jeez. Yeah, like you would have to have a 24-inch waist mm -hmm. to fit an A4 paper. Like, what? And this is a recent trend. This is not like I remember medieval times. It went viral on TikTok at one like, yes. point. But why do we perpetuate it? Honestly, I think it's also culture. Like for the Chinese, skinny is good. Just look at their celebrities you can see. Mm. Like, will Lizzo thrive in China? Different. Will people love her? Different. Oh. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, it's we true, love this. Yeah. But in the Western side of the world, they embrace all kinds of beauties. But like in Korea, Korea is better now, I thought. Still, mm. just look at your K-pop stars. I mean, they I love so them. They're so talented, but they're they also... Are. I feel like they have to fit a certain mold, a certain size yeah. to be eligible to be a star. Correct. Because even like Hwasa, who is like, she's small, mm -hmm. but they call her too thick. Yeah. Like curvy. Curvy, yeah. yeah. Just because she's not like skinny, skinny. Yeah. I feel like it's different in different parts of the world. So I don't know how to chase. Like, That's I, true. I, I really don't know. I mean, let, let's take out social media and all that, right? When do you girls think that, or have you started accepting your beauty for what it is, right? How do you get there where you're like, I'm enough, I'm beautiful. I wake up and I say, I'm enough. I'm beautiful. <laughs> no, I love her energy. Love you know, it. Like, just like, take it or leave it. This is me. Fuck yeah, off. That you is know? her. I just met the two ladies no, today, exactly. but I feel like I kind of know their vibe. Yeah. Like, I love it. It's true. And sometimes I feel like, should I be less of that, you know? Yeah. Like, am I being delusional? <laughs> like, do I just convince myself that I can do no wrong? Just gaslight yourself. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's yeah. what I've been doing, you know? Yeah. But I mean, I guess it's working out for my sanity. So you should just be like Azura. Just be like, yeah, I am beautiful. I am enough. And what's it to you? Correct. I have a gentler approach. Okay. <laughs> I wish I'm like you though. Like I'm a bit of a people pleaser. Okay. So I also, I guess, please myself a little. I have to like say nice things to myself okay. and say like, fuck this shit. Let's go, bitch. <laughs> like I don't think. What do you say to yourself? Like, ah, got a bit of flaps today. Hmm. Okay. Where is this coming from? Okay. I think I've not really eaten well. It's okay, Maggie. You got this. This week, let's try to eat better, okay? My approach is a bit gentler. I think that's just how I am. You know what? Can I tell you guys a story? This yes, ridiculous please. story. It's beauty standards still, but nothing to do with size, but my skin color. Oh. Ah. So, I don't know if you guys can see, if you're listening on Spotify, jump over to YouTube, I guess, to see. I'm a little bit more tanned for a Chinese girl. Mm. I'm a little fairer now, but I grew up really tanned. And my mom will like also make fun of me. Ayo, why are you so dark one? Ah? Oh, yeah. And my sister is actually way fairer than I am. Okay. And my mom would make this joke that, you know, she'd say, I uh, should have had coffee when I had you. Mm -hmm. So when you came out, uh, so dark. Uh, so oh I, I had, I cut out my coffee. I only had soya bean when I had your sister. I mean, my sister came out fair. I'm like, Ma, I don't think it works that way. But okay, I get where she's coming from. This was back in the days, right? So there was one time, this person told me the same thing. She's like, you know what? Uh, this person, by the way, some context, she is like a talent manager. Mm -hmm. So she kind of like scalped individuals and say whether or not you have the potential to be a star or whatever it is that you want to be. She looked at me, she's like, you've got potential, you can speak, but the way you look, uh, not really. So what you can do, so she was literally telling me what to do. She's like, I will recommend you to this, this doctor, um, whitening injections, yeah, you need to whiten your skin. That was when for me it was a little bit too much. Like at the point, honestly, I never had any problem with my own skin tone. In fact, 
I started loving it. This mm. camerallish color, absolutely like, yeah. right. Like it looks healthy. I, it looks yeah, radiant. I like it. Right. Yeah. But when she said that, it stuck to me for a while. I'm like, oh my gosh! For the longest time, I didn't mm. want to go under the sun because I didn't want to be mm. tanner, like a shade darker than mm. I already am. Because in her, like it's a bad thing. Like it's a bad thing. Also because I was like trying to also enter the entertainment industry. Mm. So I thought, okay, if I'm going to, this was me when I was like 19, like right. 20, or so young, right? Didn't know any better. So I wish, I wish she didn't say that. But because she said that. I mean, it made you that much more self-conscious. So mm. much more. So now I I try my best to be more conscious with the way I comment on the way people look. In fact, right. I don't even talk about the way they look anymore unless mm. they ask, like mm. a genuine conversation to right. know. But otherwise, like I don't even talk about how people look. You are who you are. That's something that I read a long time ago, and I really liked it. And basically, it said that when we meet little children, especially like little girls, we have this tendency of saying like, "Oh, you look so pretty. Oh, look at that dress. Yeah. It's so nice." Yeah. And they said like, "Stop. Like, cut it out." Because we did that, it's like telling the kid that, "Oh, it's outwardly appearances. Yeah, you're like, planting oh, a I'm seed. pretty. Yeah. Or like, oh, my dress is nice. Why can't you say something like, oh, you know, that's so smart. Oh, you know." Something inside and not like outside. Yeah, I mean we're not perfect too. That's what we grew up with. We we think we're saying something nice, yeah. but sometimes maybe it does them more harm yeah. than good. Correct. And I think I've also heard about how not just from like media, or like watching celebrities, but you know, similar to Maggie and how her mom pointed out like a skin tone, for example. Right. I know friends who suffer from like body dysmorphia till today because of what their mothers would oh tell them gosh, yeah. yeah because they just grew up feeling like they were never enough yeah. you put on one kilo and your mother's just going oh you know calling you fat and things yeah. like Stop that eating rice mm. oh my gosh <laughs> And I know this person who got so obsessed, right? She just beats herself up for it all the time. And so sad to watch because I think she looks perfect, you know? So she went through like a time where for years she would work out multiple times a day. Over-exercising. Over-exercising yeah. multiple times a day. When she built muscles, her mother would say again. And then she would feel something again. And then when she stopped, her mother says something oh. again. And then she feels something again. Exactly what I mean. You're setting yourself up for failure if you're chasing for people's compliments, their approval and chasing trends, right? Cannot win one. Impossible. It sounds like the key is really self-validation. You need to be able to derive your confidence from yourself and not from other people. Other people. It's yeah. very much easier said than done, right? Mm, but yeah. one thing you also need to keep in mind is that the grass is always greener on the other side. Yeah. Mm. Someone with small boobs mm. wants yeah. big boobs. Hey, Someone yeah. with bigger boobs wants One smaller small boobs. boobs. Correct! Because, like I always say, yeah. everything you wear looks vulgar. <laughs> really? Yes! I'm you so, don't look vulgar. You Sorry, I laughed, laugh. but not. Yeah, I didn't laugh because of that. But just the way she said it, it's so funny. <laughs> like people think it's great, right? Yeah. But like you could be covered up. And it just looks more vulgar. Yeah, yeah. And then when it's like exposed, mm. you look like you're flaunting, right? Yeah. Now I'm just like, ah, oh, see, see lah. Yeah. Is there what we do? <laughs> no, the grass is always greener, right? Yeah. Like you'll never be happy if you're always chasing impossible happiness. Yeah. yeah. So just try to remember that the only person that can decide that you are enough, that you are smart enough, beautiful enough, good enough for yourself is you, is not anyone mm. else. Yeah. 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 I used to hate being this tall. Why? I know, right? I wish. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> People's gonna hate me for this, but like growing up, I was the odd one out all the time. Right. Right? And my mom would tell me, You're so tall, you're going to find a friend. Oh my god. Like, Mom, <laughs> like, I'm 15! You know? Yeah. So I was already this height at like 15, 16. Oh, wow. You know, like I was really tall. And always in class, I would, you know, ask to stand all the way at the back or like always be told to do something because mm. that's the first thing they see me, mm. the tall girl. And like boys at a time would all be shorter than me because yeah, puberty yeah. hits them later yeah. on, right? So I hated my height for the longest time. No, like now I love it. Don't worry about it. How did it. you learn to love it? Like what made you like, yes, I'm tall. Yes. Yeah. I just started growing into it. Like I enjoy my body for the way it is. Mm. And I like that people started complimenting my height too mm. like oh you're really tall so that's so good so I think it right. adds up to that as much as we don't want to rely on compliments I yeah. feel like if it's for the good it is good for you I was surrounded by great people at some part of my life would you date someone shorter than you? I have how much shorter? without heels slightly taller but if I do wear heels then he would be like half a head shorter than me ah uh. 
Did you consciously wear heels less? Yes. Mm. Like flats all the time. Mm. Yeah. So I started only seeking out for a tall guy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one seven four and up. Give us a go. At least six feet. La, it's I quite think. a task. Huh? It is. My ex is six feet one. Wow. So that was nice. That was Actually, tall. now before that also six feet two. Most of them are tall. Oh. Except for that one shorter one when I was way younger. But I don't know. At this yeah. point, I don't know if I would date a shorter guy. I don't want to say never. You know, I always jinx it. We always yeah, jinx yeah. it. What I don't want to really say. really fall in love yeah, with someone? Sure. Yeah, Well, honestly, yeah, sure. If I do love him, he's a great guy. Yes, I'm no longer that person, I feel. Yeah. If you asked me when I was maybe 10 years ago, mm. I would say, you know. But like at this point of my life, I think physicality is only small part of the equation yeah. whether or not he's tall or short doesn't tell whether or not he's a good or bad husband or a boyfriend right yeah. like it doesn't really matter your character matters more that is just true just putting this out there <laughs> that is true I just saw this in your Instagram as well where you were addressing someone's concern about being 30 and unmarried and, oh. and just feeling very like sometimes you feel like what's wrong with me am I not pretty enough am yeah. I not you know mm. good enough am I yeah. not just because I'm not attached or married mm. at yeah. the age of 30. No, it is societal standards, measures, milestones that someone else sets for us. Correct. Who said we're supposed to do that? Exactly. And I always believe that it's all like societal's timeline, you know? Mm. Like whoever in the world said that, even with little things right like there's no one more fits all no what way. makes you think that everybody is supposed to be on that same like timeline you yeah. know it's insane to expect that no let's be honest you can be 30 and divorce too so i'm okay not being married yeah absolutely. Hey, hey, hey. as long as you're happy right yeah so i've got a friend who's in his 50s okay. who is not married oh. and for the longest time people were always asking like, when are you getting married? And all these kind of questions, right? He's never right? been married. Never been. Okay. And one day, he said, I want to be happy. Can you guarantee me that if I'm married, <laughs> that I'll be happy? Oh, good question. Honestly. Probably not. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Yeah. So, I think, do you on your own timeline? Like, on your own timeline. And let's be honest, not everyone wants to get married and have kids. Mm. Let them be if they don't want to. Let them be if they want to be single for life. You do you, man. Yeah, just because you don't fit up to society's beauty standards, standards of what your life should be, doesn't mean you are less, mm -hmm. right? That is just what they deem to be right. But there are billions of people living yeah. different lives, doing things their own way. Look to the people that yeah. give you power. Yes. Yeah. You know, just the other day, actually, I was talking to one of my close friends and you know, like how they would hype you up. Absolute number one hype girl. <laughs> and then I said, oh my gosh, you're like my number one hype girl. She said, I'm surprised I've knocked Jermaine off the podium. <laughs> And I said, no, if I put all of you in the same room, y'all will let me get away with murder. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you would laugh. I don't know if this is a good thing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, surround yourself with amazing people yeah. that build you up instead of tear you down. I yeah. think knowing who your true friends are in that regard really helps you feel beautiful as well. Even on your worst days, they tell you you're beautiful on the inside and on the outside. Yeah, that's yeah. very, very true. Who you keep in your life really makes or breaks you. And I think you're only in competition with yourself. Am I better than the me yesterday? Yeah. If I'm not, it's okay, we try again tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go to sleep, reset, try again. Yeah. Right. My last question for you girls, right, is at this stage in your life, after being through so much and trying to live up to so many expectations, what does being beautiful mean to you? A confident woman is a damn beautiful woman. And sexy too. Yeah. yeah. A smart woman who speaks eloquently, who speaks her mind, I think that's damn beautiful. Like, her mind is so damn beautiful, it makes her so damn attractive. I don't know, that's just how I see it, yeah? I'm fired up. See, even yeah, like, that sounds so attractive. <laughs> it does, you know. It does. It does. No, no, Nothing yeah, to yeah, do yeah. with how I look at all. Not at all. In fact, you know, just by the way that you walk into a room, right? If you believe that you are beautiful, yeah. you will look beautiful walking into the room. Exactly. If you walk in like, I'm so ugly yeah. today, then, yeah. yeah, I mean. In Chinese, they like to say, there's no ugly women, there's only lazy women. <gasps> Have you heard of this thing called there are no ugly people, there are only poor people? Are you shit? Hey, that's no, no, no. no. Oh. Like, I've seen this thing. And then, right, the worst thing about it is, as an example, they use Cristiano Ronaldo. Why, yeah? What's wrong with Ronaldo? Oh, uh, because he was not as, um... You mean oh, he's like, good looking? Done? I don't think it's work. I think maybe it's wealth. 
Huh? Absolutely. I think you've got less worries, less stress. <laughs> yeah. You also have money for things. And money does bring happiness. I don't want to say money can't buy happiness. To a certain extent, it can. But oh, wow. it can, it's not everything. I feel like we are going to a part two about, yeah, yeah, about yeah. money no, and I'm happiness. No, I'm just saying that you can't look at celebrities mm. and compare yourself that way. Yeah. Because no, they're going for like fair. weekly no, no. facials yeah. and whatever skin boosters. They have doctors coming to their house. Correct. To do things yeah. on them. Correct. You know? Just watch Kim Kardashian's time. reality show. Yeah, you just yeah, see yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's five people around her, one doing nails, one doing pedicure, <laughs> one doing her brows, one doing this and that. For her to look good for like five seconds on the red carpet. Exactly. Unrealistic. And even they also don't... I remember one episode, the outfit that she was in was so tight that it burst at the butt. Oh yeah, watch that episode. Yeah. <laughs> And she was on stage at a conference talking with a hole in her butt. She was like, I felt the air coming in. But she still looked gorgeous from yeah, the front. Right. And that exactly. teaches you that you fake it till you, you make, make it. it. Mm. Yeah, even if you everything is falling apart, you go on, do the damn thing, you'll be fine. And you're beautiful. Applies to all other areas of life as well. Yes, fake even if your you life it. is falling apart. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you might need to see someone if you're like... No, you just continue working yourself little by little every day. Is there an inside joke that I'm not getting? No, no, no. no. <laughs> We're just no. a bit of a... I love A it. bit I of a mess. It. No, because I, I host alone on my show. Yeah. So like, this is so fun. Do you this have a guest fun, right? on? Like... I have all the time, but like, you know, I don't have a co-host. So, so I, we I go can... to Malaysia. Yeah, yeah come on, call me, call Malaysia. me. Malaysia. I bring you all out. Hey, hey, hey guys. I love Malaysia. Thank you yeah. so much for tuning in today to Hush Podcast. We're so sad that Hazel isn't here, but we're very happy that we managed to hear from such a just beautiful on the inside and out she's just radiating yeah. sunbeams is it because I'm wearing yellow? possibly you could be wearing pajamas for all I care and I think you would still emit the same aura thank you ladies yeah. I had such a great time I mean huge fan of your show I you started listening when I got the invitation to this show and I couldn't stop so I think I've binged at least like 10 episodes at one go oh my god yeah I love what you guys do I think the conversations that you have is so so important especially for young women or whoever it is that listen to it and can resonate I think this is important like the work that we're doing here is really breaking cycles hopefully to bring better change yes. SG and MY let's yes. <laughs> I'm sure you've helped you know so many out there as well yeah. young girls people who don't know who to turn to yeah. but like sensitive taboo topics yeah. and we'll just keep going keep again. doing you girls I love it I'll continue to tune in yeah. Make sure you tune in to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Me Listen, or tune in to YouTube to see Maggie's gorgeous face. Yeah. That's right. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at itsclarity.co. My final note is fuck beauty standards and huh? fuck what society tells you yeah. because if someone tells you skinny is good and that you should be skinny, but if you're skinny and not happy, for what? Correct. You do you. Yes. Let's Don't go. care what people say. Don't care. Just keep falling head over heels for yourself and said hey. for yourself as and always. That's my ah, outro all the time. Head over uh-huh. heels. Yes. I love it. Bye guys. See you next time. See ya. There are no ugly people. There are only poor people. I can use Henry Golding as an example. Oh. Like before he got into Crazy Rich Asian into Hollywood, I feel like he's a not bad looking guy. Not bad. Yeah. But ever since he got into Hollywood, oh my god. Wow. Since when he's so cute. Uh? <laughs> since when he's so attractive. <laughs> I don't know. You're right. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. With money comes a different glow. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>